Hello, everyone. I hope you're all having as wonderful a day as I am. No, I'm not just being peppy for no reason. Tomorrow, my husband is coming to join me here in the States. I could not be more excited. And also, it's just been a nice day. It's like 70 degrees, very sunny. I went for a really nice walk with my dog. I thought he might be in the frame, but he's not. Um, so I'd love to hear if you're here and you're watching this live, let me know how you're doing, what you're up to. I'd love to hear what you're up to. Yeah, like if you've got anything, any writing projects going on, um, anything like that. I'm just gonna make sure that my microphone is set up before I get started here. Which one are you, bad boy? Can anybody hear me? Just checking. Um, all right, so today for the Write With Me Live, I thought I would do a little bit of a poll if you're joining me. Um, so I'll share my screen. If you're new to this, what the concept is, is I just write a blog post live. I'll just show you my whole process. I answer questions along the way. Um, I think there's a lot of like worry about the right way to do a blog post. And I thought by sharing my process and doing the whole thing live and doing Q&A, uh, it would kind of demystify it and really give you the sense, hopefully, that you can also write a blog post. It's, it's easy. It should be fun. It should be rewarding. Um, so that's kind of the goal of these little sessions. So yeah, if you're just joining in, hop on the chat. Let me know who you are, where you're from, what you're up to today. I would love to hear that. And I'll share my screen now. So these are some of the drafts that I had kind of in my head. Um, let me delete this one. Because I thought what would be fun today would be to let you pick what I write about. Um, a lot of times, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine options for you to choose from. So, hey, Mariana and Anil, great to see you both. Um, if you see anything on there that you'd love to see me write about, just holler, let me know. I've got a couple ideas, if not. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just give it a couple of minutes while I wait for y'all to pick if anybody has any specific opinions or not. <sighs> I'm doing really well today. I just, I can't believe how beautiful a day it is. It's spring. You know how the trees all start to get like a little, like fat, like you can tell the buds are about to, I love this time of year. So good. All right. Um, Y'all are very shy today. I would please let me know in the chat what content you would like me to write. I actually did a YouTube poll of this earlier um, because I was wondering I was wondering what I should write about. So let's let's see. I may have, I think it's on my channel in the community. I posted a poll. So it seems like people were most keen on a think piece about social media and pop culture. So I'll write a think piece about social media and pop culture. Why not? Let's see. Social media, pop culture. I mean... I want to do this one, but this one's going to require a lot of research. You can see I've kind of like started taking screenshots and stuff, but uh, I just, I, I've, I've interviewed this guy. I chatted to him on his Twitter, on, on their Twitter account. Um, I've got a lot of screenshots. I think this one's probably going to, well, no, you know what? Okay, I will. This will be a little bit of a challenge because I can't do all my work here. I'll have to, I'll have to save some for the screenshots and the proper research. But I'll start drafting out what I want the structure to look like here. And let's let's start from scratch so we can get a new a new sort of um oops, not import, that's not right. Go back. Hi, Miss Lady. Hi, Astrid. My cat has joined me. She only comes when I'm on camera. It's I don't know why, but she loves to come and step on my keyboard when I'm busy doing other stuff. Isn't that right, Miss Lady? So sweet. All right. Um, yeah, let's let's just jump in. So what do I what points do I want to build here? Uh, main point one. Let's see. I think my main point about Twitter selling his first the founder of Twitter selling his first ever tweet for God 2.5 million. It's kind of like, what is a tweet worth? And I actually answered that question in another article I did. Um, I 
emailed a bunch of viral tweet owners and I was like, hey, did y'all get paid for this? And they all like said no, <laughs> basically, or they got, you know, 10 or 20 bucks from a random brand sponsorship. Um, main point two, so it's on brand for me. Let's see. And I think this is an interesting thing too, because um, I have to use blah, blah, blah. What does make a tweet valuable? Like the fact that the founder of Twitter is selling his first ever tweet for $2.5 million. What does that mean for people like me? What, like, do you have to be a founder? Is it just like nostalgia or like owning a piece of something bigger than yourself? Um, and I think my main point number three is going to be the future. Like what is the future, the future of content? the future of Twitter, the future of NFTs for digital art. Um, Cause I know like there's, I forgot what it's called. I'll have to do again, like I said, my, my proper research to figure this out. Um, actually I've got another main point, but I've got main point three. Why saw one? Why buy one? Um, stolen theft tweets. All right. This is why I have to outline because I have like 10,000 ideas and I want to make sure I get them all down in a way that makes sense. So, what is a tweet worth? That answer has just changed a lot. It used to be that you could just get stuff for free on Twitter. And now apparently you can mint them on the blockchain. And then what makes a tweet valuable? Oh yeah, here's another one, originality. E.g. stopping the theft of joke tweets. If you can prove yours was the first. And point three, what's the point? Question mark, because I'm still not 100% sure future of selling your tweets. All right, so we've got something that looks like an outline that looks like a solid type of something I could write. I'll pause and see if anybody's got any questions. Robert, what's the best way to be added to a medium publication like one zero? I email them a pitch and draft link, but never get a response. Yeah, so you're gonna have to keep trying. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. I have been published in one zero. And even now when I pitch them, I don't just add my story in the typical medium way. I email them another pitch and I'm like, Hey, it's me again. <laughs> Here's another pitch. Um, you have to like the success rates of getting in there are very, very low. Even someone like me, I don't say this to brag, but to point out how hard it is. I'm on a first name basis with some of the editors of these publications. They know me as a person. I know them as professionals. And sometimes I'll pitch them something and they're like, we don't want that. No, no, don't go somewhere else with that, with that garbage. It's going to be hard to get in there. You just have to keep trying. Um, any word limit and pattern to write on medium? No word limit at all. And pattern, just anything that is valuable for your readers. I tend to go with a pretty consistent, like intro bullet, bullet, bullet conclusion. But if you want to get artsy, why not? Um, how can you find more freelance clients? This is a whole video in and of itself. I will not be able to answer this live today right now. I do have a video, um, hang on. Zuli freelance clients, YouTube. I'll post the link here. Here's an example of an article I've written answering that question. Um, how, another great one from you. And how do you deal with people that waste your time? For example, they keep asking you to do things or talk to you a lot when you have stuff to do. Um, if you're someone like me who finds it hard to tell people no, this is going to be hard. But the only answer is that you have to tell people no. There's no shortcut. You just have to find a way to draw your boundaries and say, hey, sorry, I have stuff I need to do. I can't deal with you right now, but, you know, in a slightly nicer way. All right, let's go ahead and start writing this introduction. Hmm. So something y'all might not know, I have a secret shortcut that I use when I don't know what to do for my introductions. Sometimes I've got a punchy anecdote lined up. Uh, other times like today, I don't. So I just copy my main points 
and I pop them in my introduction and I fluff them up a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, so how much is a tweet worth? Somewhere between zero dollars. Well, we'll actually put the dollar sign there. Zero and 2.5 million. I actually want to find out if I can find that Jack Dorsey selling tweet how much. Because that was like a week ago that it was 2.5 million. <sighs> Where is it selling it? Where? Share the link. All right, this is the one. This is the one I want. Ending this March 21st. Oh, my days. Um, yeah, still only 2.5 million. I guess nobody's that silly. All right, so we've done that. All right, full disclosure, I saw a really good question from Mariana that distracted me from writing, so I'm going to answer this. Uh, this week, I featured in Medium's trending topics and received many distasteful bully comments on my story. First of all, huge congratulations on writing a trending story. When you do that, I, I know, God, I know it sucks to get those comments, and you don't deserve them. That's the thing. But when you get them, what, both going viral and the trending comments, it means that you've written something that resonated, whether poorly or well. Um, we all hope that people, you know, you read it and, it, and people love it. Um, but congrats, that's 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 hard to do. A lot of people, myself included, would love to be on the trending list um, frequently. So the fact that you accomplished it is amazing, and I hope that you are proud and happy of the work that you did to accomplish that. Um, but yeah, I get that you'd be scared of going viral again for for fear of the internet trolls. My strategy is kind of scorched earth. I don't read any of my comments. Um, this means that I miss a lot of really nice comments and I have cut off an avenue of communication with my the people who read my work. And that is that is a loss for me, but also it means I don't have to deal with stuff like this. When I go trending for whatever random article I've written, I always get, there's always someone who disagrees and posts a nasty comment. Um, hopefully, I hope that they're just nasty comments and they haven't like gone after you as a person on the internet because uh, that's even crappier, um, but it still sucks. I'm afraid I don't have any advice other than, yeah, not to read the comments. Um, you can, if you want to, you can wade through, report them, block them, but honestly, it's not worth it because there are always more. And just take pleasure in the fact that you managed to get to them and whether they received your article well or poorly, you still elicited a response and that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, do I write for Zora? Do they accept white women writers? I don't think so. I think they mostly prefer women of color. Uh, what are some tech publications as I have a tech related article ready? What's up? I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Here's how you do that. You go to medium.com forward slash topics and look for your topic, technology tech or um, you know, any one of these. Let's say you've got a blockchain one and then here in the blockchain one, you're going to scroll down and see what publications pop up. Better Programming, CoinMonks, Fawn, Debugger. Done. That's how you do it. All right. I've procrastinated. This article is a little hard for me to write because I don't really know my way around NFTs or crypto. I Like I said, I just dipped my toe in it. Mm, 
Do I want to tag him? No. All right, here I'm going to link up my bad boy. Um, how much is uh, this? Is the story I wanted to link to? Okay, so we've got an introduction. Maybe a little bit of a dramatic conclusion, but let's find out. Wait, no, I didn't get mean to get rid of all those bullets. Oh, I didn't have any to begin with. Dang it. All right, never mind. <sighs> I DM'd honors of four viral tweet creators. I learned viral tweet isn't worth much. That's no way. Stop and take a break because I have lost track of what I'm trying to say. Um, okie dokie, artichokey. Um, hey, my article was published on the startup and is doing pretty well, but was not curated. Do you know any reason for why that might happen from your past experiences? Yeah, so the short answer is that curation is looking for good, well written articles. And if your story wasn't curated, it might just be that it wasn't written enough. Um, it could be something more like techie, like, or not techie like um, when you include an image 
here. Let's see, I don't know, ink. Look, you always, always, always have to put the accreditation here. Um, if you don't, Medium might dock you for that. It could be because you have ads in it. I don't know, it's hard for me to see without like knowing the article itself, but there are a lot of normally pretty good reasons why a story doesn't get curated. The most frequent one is that it just wasn't good enough. Um, I see chosen for further distribution under my article. Good job. How long does it take to see the views go up? So you're not going to see a you're you're not going to see a big spike. That's the thing you have to understand about curation. It's not going to be like pressing a magic virality button and tomorrow you wake up to hundreds of views. What's more likely is that your story will be recommended and continue to be recommended to readers over the long course. So an uncurated article for me, it'll die after the first couple of days and it won't unless I you know manage to get it trending on Google. It won't get very many internal views. A curated article gets recommended to readers again and again and again. It has a much greater chance of going viral, but beyond that, it's got a much longer lifespan on, on Medium. And you'll find that, I don't know if it'll, it might be pennies, it might be dollars, it might be tens of dollars, but you'll find that those curated stories continue earning month after month. What topics the Ascent accept now? I see a lot of psychology, but can find marketing and tech also. Well, it sounds like you've got your answer. Um, whatever articles you see published, that's the kind of stuff that they're looking for. Do you get notified if your article gets curated? Yeah, um, I actually don't know anymore if they used to, but I turned off all my notifications ages ago, so I've got no idea. Uh, um, my articles are getting curated, but they're not getting as many reads. I've seen the stats, especially Android traffic has gone down. Any thoughts? Uh, my stats are down 50% from five months ago. I think Medium, I think Medium changed the algorithm. I don't know what's going on. I don't know where the views are going. I don't know if Medium as a whole is experiencing less traffic um, and that's causing everyone's views to be a little dampened, but the relationship between getting published, getting curated, getting into publications and getting a lot of views has recently changed and I don't know how. Those are my thoughts. They're all, I don't have any facts. They're just my conspiracy thoughts. Um, alrighty, let's, let's crack on. valuable, doesn't it? I forgot what the name of the website is. Valuables, yeah.
Why? Why? I do not understand. Someone make it make sense. How much was it? It was nine out point. Uh, nine three. Oops. What was the name of that person? I have to go into my original stories. Where is it? I just had it. Ah, ah here. Okay. So it was 
Bloom dart, that's right. Let's pause and see if there are any questions. Do, 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 do. Um, do you write for platforms which 100, 2,000 per articles, 15 to 3,500 words? That's such a specific question. I would love to know, Ola, um, what made you ask that? I'm, I'm very curious. Uh, how do you add your medium portfolio on Upwork? I have not actually gotten into Upwork yet, so I cannot ask that question, answer that question. But if anybody has any other Answers for Ola, please pop them in the chat. <sighs> My tea's almost empty. I'm a little sad about that. Hmm. All right, let's crack on. Oh, they have their own. Perfect. I can add them. We don't need your money, money. I don't know why I've got that song stuck in my head. I guess I'm thinking about money here. <laughs> um, okay. What's the tweet? they bought um oh hang on oh 
I want to see them on valuables. I can't figure out how to do it. Oh, well. cuts. Let's see if we've got any questions. Um, uh, 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 um. Oh, Ellie slash Eli. I think it's Ellie. I'm not 100% sure. Um, how, many, how many words are you able to write in an hour? Yeah, it depends how distracted I am. If I'm really like sitting down and cranking words out, probably around 1,500 or 2,000. Uh, if I'm doing something like this where I'm like chatting a little bit and answering questions, writing, researching. I mean, we can extrapolate. It's been 40 minutes and I've written uh, 746 words. So I can't do math. Uh, 
something like a thousand on a slower, slower hour. Um, I have an interest in writing short stories. Can you tell me whether I can post on Medium? Yeah, absolutely. You can 100% post short stories on Medium. Um, there are very few rules about what you cannot post on Medium. Most of it is stuff like harassment, uh, racism, you know, that kind of stuff that you, you really shouldn't be posting anywhere on the internet. Um, short stories are 100% allowed. So here are topics of three websites with $1,000. One wedding topics, two solutions to day-to-day -to -day problems with $2 per word. Platform is interested in stories on the environment guides, interviews. Awesome. Glad to hear that. If you're not writing for those, maybe you should consider it. Um, and can you tell me some publications regarding that? Yeah, so your best bet here um, is going to be to go to medium.com forward slash topics. Medium.com forward slash topics. And check out fiction the fiction tag fiction um in here you'll be able to see what stories what short stories are being published um ps i love you seems to publish a lot of them so that might be something you could try uh i just got home and don't know what valuable is i <laughs> will read your article very soon i still don't really know what valuable is so we're in the same boat uh, uh, uh. Do, 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 do. So I think I actually covered this in this section so I can get rid of that. The future of selling your tweets. Called. I think I, mm, where did I put that information? Is it in my other medium story? Medium. I can never remember what it's called. Ooh, stories. Um, this one. Nope, I did not put it there. Great. Um, Twitter box dealing tweets minting. Hopefully that will get me. NFT. Is it this? Where? What was it called? I'm so annoyed. I'm going to have to come back for that later. TK, name of that bot.
All right, there's going to be another better way to word that, but I can't think of it right now. All right, we've got we've got something. We've got something here. Uh, I'll stop and pop in. On a general note, how well do fiction works on media? Um, it depends how good a fiction writer you are. If you're a very good fiction writer, um, it will do well. Probably not as well. The main audience on medium prefers nonfiction. Um, but if you write fiction well, you will be able to find a good audience for your work. Um, I believe that medium sets will go up for everyone in springtime. What are your thoughts? I hope so. I hope so. We shall see. Um, you reveal expressions in videos. Is that the same case in your writing? Not totally clear what you mean here by revealing expressions in videos. I'll wait for you to clarify on that. Um, how can you do such amount of work? I see that your activity, your projects are growing and can't understand how do you manage it? Have you started to hire your core team? No, um, to be honest, I have a lot of free time. I don't actually work that much. I Okay, so that's not true. I did offload all of my video editing to the coolest, <laughs> funniest, but I mean, I, I wanted, he's very good. His name is Martin. Um, he does all my video editing and I think he has since maybe like December or so. So if you've noticed a recent professional quality of my videos, um, large part of that is due to him. So I give him all my videos to edit. That's really helpful and it frees up a lot of my time. But other than that, I 
maybe spend like 10 hours a week working, writing, doing videos, answering emails, working on projects, um, but not a lot. Most of my time is spent like hanging out with my cats, hanging out with my dog, baking, reading my books, playing my video games. Um, it's pretty cool. I am blessed by the fact that I can write fairly well very quickly. That does help me. Can I publish my stories somewhere else after I publish on Medium? Absolutely. On Medium, you own 100% of the rights to your own content. You are more than welcome to republish anywhere and everywhere that you like. Uh, do you participate in Medium Club on Clubhouse? Sadly, I don't have an iPhone, so I have been invited to Clubhouse, but I, I haven't even started getting into it. Can a link be added to the bottom of a story in a publication to a previously published story by the same author in the same publication? If so, which is the best method? Thanks in advance. David, this depends entirely on the publication. Some of them are totally happy with you to add your own stuff to the bottom. Um, some prefer that you don't because they put their own call to action there. So if you're ever in doubt, I always recommend just send a private note to the editor of the publication. Hey, thinking about um, doing exactly that, would that be okay for this story? Done. Uh, Yes, thank you, right? Martin does a really good job. Um, I mean, I, it helps that I got a better camera, I got a better microphone, but the quality of the edits, um, like I I cannot state enough how much I love what he does for me. Um, if any of you want your videos edited and you want his contact information, leave me a comment and I'll let him know because he does such a good job. Um, all right, let's wrap this up. We got five minutes left. I want to, I'm gonna put my hair up because it's business time. I'm not going to be able to wrap this up. I probably won't publish this for another couple of days, um, but let's see. Alright, so normally normally I'm a little further along when I get to this stage. Like I don't even have a conclusion. Conclusion, question mark, question mark, question mark, TK. Um but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read the whole thing aloud and see what I think. The founder of Twitter is selling his first ever tweet for 2.5 million dollars. God, that's a lot. How much is a tweet worth? Somewhere between zero and two of Twitter is minting his first ever tweet on the blockchain by selling it to the highest bidder, currently 2.5 million. But it's open until March 21st if you want to own a piece of history and have After seeing this unfold on Twitter, I decided to dip my toe into crypto Twitter for an afternoon. As I'd recently answered the question for myself of how much a viral tweet is worth, seeing Dorsey put his tweet on the bidding block made me wonder, again, what makes a tweet valuable? Why would somebody want to buy Dorsey's first ever tweet for 2.5 million? What does the ability to buy and sell tweet mean for the future of Twitter and the future of content creation? In the past decade, we've seen social medias transform our human landscape, transform, I can get rid of that, how we think transform much of our lives from what we wear to things as intimate and personal as how we interact, think and interact with, think about and interact with others. How will this development change Twitter and ourselves? What is a tweet worth? When I DM the owners of four vile tweet creators, tweet creators, I learned a viral tweet isn't worth much. It has no inherent value on Twitter. The only way to monetize it is if you promote content afterwards. This can be your own content like an Etsy shop or a brand might contact you to promote their content for a price. That's why it's so fascinating for me to scroll on valuables and see in real time that the value of some tweets is evolving um, to contain, what's another word for inherent, native native value. Dorsey's 2.5 million tweet is on the high end, but I've seen some sold anywhere from $1.19 to $1,190.93. What do
I've tried to piece together what makes a tweet valuable. What made creators want to sell or fans want to buy? What makes... The website Dorothy is selling his tweet on claims that they're all uh, valuables. The The website Dorothy is selling this tweet on claims that there are all sorts of reasons to buy and sell tweet. Tweets such as financial investment, hold sentimental value, and to create a relationship between collector and creator. Scrolling on the list of sold tweets, I did notice some factors in common that didn't have much to do with that list. Many were about crypto, Bitcoin, or NFTs. Many of the tweets sold and bought we're about crypto, Bitcoin, or NFTs. That to me suggests that that suggests that most of the interested audience today is already heavily inv invested in this space and is looking to be part of this recent change. I haven't seen many tweets bought or sold from someone who simply wanted to own a tweet from their favorite creator. So is it nostalgia? Owning a piece of something larger than yourself? If you're not the creator of Twitter selling your inaugural tweet, can your tweet ever be considered valuable? To satisfy my curiosity, I messaged Loom Dart, partner at eGirl Capital, who has both sold and bought tweets on Valuables. The rationale was simple. Uh, it's gamification of Twitter. A lot of us are very involved in the crypto Twitter space, and stuff like this makes it way more fun. You get to own a piece of history. And recently, the concept of value has shifted to something way more malleable. By selling my tweets, I get some ability to help participate in this whole crazy fest. Loom Dart sold this tweet to James Marshall for $10. Ah, no, I did not want to do that. I just wanted to. Or... But when I asked what made a tweet valuable, in their opinion, their outlook wasn't optimistic. I doubt any of these tweets will hold value apart from Jack's OG one, Lindart told me. My own thought was originality. If you spend any amount of... My own thought was that originality could be commodified. If you spend any amount of time on Twitter and Instagram, you'll become aware that some of the jokes show up time and time again, copied from accounts and reposted with no or only minor variations. <sighs> then a month later, they crop up on Instagram, meme farms without accreditation. With the ability to prove that first to come up with that tweet be valuable, could it be used in cease and desists or ECMAs? Would that have legal standing? One current stumbling block in that plan is that Valuables did not currently allow creators to mint their own tweets. The only way is for someone else to purchase them. Either way, it seems like right now, the only, it seems like today, it seems like today, oh, why can't I spell? It seems like today, the only purpose of buying or selling a tweet is speculative or whimsical at the moment. I can get rid of at the moment. Um, if they're not doing it to be active spectators of history, it seems buyers buy not because they want to own a tweet, but because they believe that a minted tweet will have greater value later on. Unlike crypto, where a token has more value if people if more people want it than want to sell it, Lundar told me, an NFT can hold value, can have value as long as one person wants it to have value. So what's the future of selling your tweets or any other original content? I was fascinated to learn that almost as soon as fascinated and unsurprised, surprised, oh my God, surprised. So unsurprised. To learn, and almost as soon as we were granted the ability to sell our tweets, a Twitter bot sprung up that allowed other people to steal and mint your tweets. It seems pretty telling that despite NFTs being touted as a way to prove authenticity and originality, um, giving power back to creators, they were almost immediately applied to accomplish the exact opposite purpose, steal and mint someone else's tweets, presumably for personal gain. Like many social media issues, there were no guardrails put out in place alongside the ability to do the thing. Oh yeah, I was going to rewrite that sentence because it's a really bad sentence. Uh, like many social media issues, um, it seems uh, like many other features of Twitter, it seems Dorsey and his team put more focus on creating the ability rather than 
considering what ramification it may have and misused. That's kind of what I was hoping to say. Today, the primary purpose of selling and buying tweets seems to be speculative. Seems to be speculative. It's considered almost like art, while many people may buy. Uh, that's, so, so that's a different idea. Um, but I can see a world in which tweets are considered almost like art. Many people buy, may buy, it's not preprints, is it? Maybe I prints that are just as lovely to look at as the original artwork, but the original painting will always be more valuable than the copies. Equally, if a painting is objectively good or bad, uh, as far as these things can be objective, the person, the painter's things, creator and reputation also matters tremendously when calculating the value of the painting. What will become of Twitter if minting tweets actually does catch on? Will people who tweet try to actively create valuable tweets such as stock predictions that seem to be of interest to buyers right now? Will it be careers of professional tweeters who make their money by creating and selling their art tweets on Twitter? One service seems scared to help creators go that route. It's possible to retain a portion, blah, 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 blah. What is my conclusion? My conclusion here is that nobody can predict the future of social media. The value of created content has seemed It Okay, all right, that's it. Uh, it's not done, I needed to polish that off a lot, but uh, we've written a blog post. Well, I have written a blog post. You all have provided the moral support. Um, I will quickly pop up and see if there are any questions. Hey, Julie, you're awesome. What would you say are some tips to get into the flow of writing when the stuff you want to publish requires a lot of research? God, I've been there. Um, yeah, so what helps me do this is having an idea of my arguments ahead of time. So I know that, okay, I've, I have two degrees in biology, um, and I know that the right way to do research, to write a good research paper, is to read a ton, a ton of research, digest it, then come up with your arguments. But for the purposes of writing a blog, I find it's much easier to do the opposite. You probably have a basic idea of what you want your argument to be. And if you have that, you can, you can outline a post 
and then go back and find research to back your point up rather than the other way around. It's a little bit of a cheat and it probably won't be as well researched as if you had first consumed an incredible quantity of professional peer reviewed writing and then regurgitated that out into your own opinion and voice. It's a lot faster for me to get into that flow of writing though when I'm not having to like stop and start every time to research stuff. So I just write the whole thing out as best as I'm aware and then I'll fact check and sort of cite after. Um, I'm quitting media. I made $50 last month after six good posts and went into publications and got curated. By the time medium takes 30% for tax and the dollars convert to pounds, it's 25 pounds, not worth it. Yeah, so, okay, that's a good point. Um, I'm uh, so, sorry, Sister Hugo, of course, Gareth, um, but I totally get where you're coming from. I would just say, always think of Medium as a really, really great portfolio. Even if the posts themselves don't make money, there's really no better other, no other better place to be publishing content on the internet that can get you discovered, not just by Medium's you know, partner program, but by people who wanna read your content, who might wanna buy services, employment opportunities, et cetera, not just for you, but for everyone else, myself included, who's currently really feeling um, the strain of trying to earn money writing on Medium. Um, Zaheer wants to know, Medium seems to have changed the way you can tell if an article has been curated or not. So they changed this a while ago. I don't know if that's what you're referring to, where like it tells you this content has been distributed. I don't know if that's what you mean, but yes, I have noticed. Um, I would love to see you focus on your blog more. You have great potential and I also freelance writing, but hey, to each their own, you're more comfortable with medium. Yeah, so I've, it has been actually a goal of mine to focus on my own blog. I had, this was really exciting a while ago. I don't know if I did this live. So if I did this live, you guys might've seen me do this. I wrote a post on YouTube alternatives to monetization because part of my goal is to start getting my own organic traffic. Cause you're absolutely right. Like if medium went down tomorrow or if I really wanna own my own content, I need to be publishing in my own blog, not just Medium. So I want to show you this because it's very exciting for me. I hope this works. So I, I wrote a blog post specifically with the intention of ranking on Google for those keywords. Alternative monetization. And there it is. I ranked on my own blog. I was so happy with myself for that. Um, that was such a fun surprise because I honestly, I had no idea that I'd even ranked and to be on the first page of Google for that, something that I did on purpose intentionally uh, was awesome. So that has actually really motivated me to keep doing that with putting more, more time into my own blog. Uh, 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 um. Where do you get these odd story ideas? It's hard finding such an idea, especially if nobody has written it unlike blogging. So. I think you'd be surprised. I think almost everything I've written has probably already been written before. But here's what I always tell myself when it comes to this. Nobody has written my this my take on this. Nobody has written my thoughts on NFT. I have done my own individual research. I have my own opinions. And that makes these topics, even though they've been done a thousand times before, that makes them unique. That makes them not original, but they're unique to me. And that makes them valuable for readers to read. But aside from that, I do kind of get random ideas. Um, basically, anytime I have a question, I write it down. <laughs> I, it sounds silly, but like I got the idea for the article I just wrote. I was scrolling on Twitter. I saw Jack Dorsey was selling his first ever tweet for $2.5 million. And I was like, why? What, who would want to buy that? What is the point? I don't understand. Um, and that inspired me to write the article that you just saw me write. So I think if you just look at life, you're all of us are so curious. We're asking stuff all the time. And just things that make you wonder, those turn into really good blog posts for me. Um, all right, I think that is everything. I'm caught up with, I think, all the questions. So thank you so much for participating. This was really fun. And look out on Sunday for the next video. It's going to be a good one. They all are, because now I've got a really cool editor. Um, and yeah, I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, and until we see each other again, happy writing.